<laughs> All right. When Parlor opened in Minneapolis's North Loop in 2013, it changed not only the neighborhood, but local cocktail culture. So with a second parlor opening soon, this time on West 7th Street in St. Paul, the East Metro will have a new epicenter for craft cocktail culture. And this one will have a unique St. Paul twist. I got a preview in this week's Mike's Mix. This building was built in 1885, and it is the oldest operational Victorian era building in the country. It's been a Harley Davidson dealership, an antique store, a failed Irish pub, and by mid April, it will become the first outpost of a North Loop legend. It's going to be really fun. I can't wait to see it. Bar director Jesse Held and the West 7th team know that to get it right, they need to honor the Minneapolis mood. I mean, we're taking the parlor name and we're bring, coming to St. Paul, sure. We're bringing the burger with us and the old-fashioned with us, sure. But how do we make it still feel like parlor? Like, what people love about parlor is you go down in the parlor and you feel like it's a cozy getaway. And how do you... How do you replicate that feeling? And that was our biggest challenge with this project. While this is a much bigger space than in Minneapolis, exposed brick partitions help to do the trick. And you're going to walk into the main bar, long 37 foot bar, um, beautiful, deep, dark woods. Then you're going to come into a lounge area where you'll have booths, you'll have a mural on the wall. Then you'll come into what the evolution of parlor has come into St. Paul is the diner. Executive chef Mike DeCamp gave me a preview of the menu, which expands on the existing parlor's menu. Eggs all day, which will be kind of fun for everybody. Um, chilaquiles, we do some scrambled eggs with crab, um, just some nice things. We have uh, classic American breakfast, potato, toast, meat, eggs. Chef says his goal is to make familiar fare, but slightly elevated and often with a touch of the south. The roast cauliflower lies on a bed of cilantro pesto with chili honey drizzled over the top and pickled chilies. And this isn't your grandparents' liver and onions. It's fried chicken livers and jalapeno jelly. Oh, wow. With some shaved uh, red onions on it. Wow, that's like so creamy. It's like yeah. a creamy texture. Well, that's the ideal when they're not overcooked. Right. They get like that. And then the old standby double patty parlor burger. Let's drink. And when I say drink, let's talk about the drinks in the diner because this is the new part of it the, is. the whole operation. The evolution of parlor. You have two bottles here. And two bottles. I'm used to coming from you a lot more bottles than that. Correct. By using two ingredients, we're being two very complex ingredients, making one cocktail to be more than it appears to be. And a lot of people have perfected the $14 cocktail. Right. But the next new frontier is maybe the $10 cocktail. Perfect the $10 cocktail. Yeah. This low-proof beauty is called Milano Torino and is based off an Americano. That's vermouth, soda water, and Campari. We love Campari. So this is just basic. I mean, there's some people who don't, but... I don't want to know that. Uh, this is an ounce and a half of Campari. Pute de Mace is the other ingredient. Hybrid vermouth and Amaro. A little sweeter and a little less bitter. And it's, a, it's an ounce and a half of that as well. And that, folks... Is it. There's a little magic in the shake. Make it vigorous enough to aerate the two ingredients and create bubbles to mimic soda water. Enjoy. Check down. <laughs> wow, very complex. A little, right. a little bitter, but also bright and citrusy, and it's almost like a velvety texture with that, yeah, with, with that, that shake. shake. Yep. Parlor St. Paul will open in mid-April, they promise, but if you are looking for a last-minute brunch treat mm -hmm. for Easter, that two-ingredient uh, Milano Torino could be perfect. The recipe is posted at WCCO.com slash Mike's Mix. Thank